P. Coleman, content director for Brother Be Well. Tonight, we're going to be talking about stigma that is still, believe it or not, associated with mental health and how stigma manifests itself across generations. We've got a great panel to help us talk about this. We're going to be talking with Patrick Ma. Let me introduce you to him. He's a Brother Be Well clinical advisor. Patrick, how's it going? Good to see you again. I'm doing well, Michael. How are you? Really good. Really good to see you. We've got Esther Murithi. She's a part of our Capital City Black Nurses Association Dream Team. Esther, how are you tonight? I'm doing wonderful. Happy to be here. Really good to have you back on the platform. And we've got a new friend to us here at Brother Be Well. Jacob Vargas is a public health advocate. Jacob, how are you, sir? Hey, Mike. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It, really good. Really good to have you here as well as everybody else. Let's let's get right into this. we got a lot to talk about. As we look at stigma and mental health, I'm happy to say that, at least in this case, um, we seem to be getting better at something as we go along. Um, younger generation seems to be much more on top of this than, than folks my age or folks even older. I'm wondering if you'd agree with me, can we learn something, can, can adults learn something from younger generations about stigma and mental health and how we deal with that? I don't know who wants to take that. Maybe, Jacob, you're, you're, you're the newie newbie to the group, why don't you take that one first? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that the younger generations, they definitely do have a little bit of an advantage because um, as when it comes to people my age, it's more acceptable, it's more encouraged, there's more information available in, in different media uh, to help inform, to better inform what mental health is and uh, how to combat mental health stigma. So when I was growing up, I was definitely taught to to man up and to stop my crying. And um, whenever I experienced any sort of anxiety or depression, um, my parents didn't really know how to deal with it. And so they kind of thought that I was being weak. And so um, what I understand now is that the, the my shortcomings and my blind spots when it comes to uh, emotional and mental health awareness, that, those are actually inherited from my parents. And so sometimes I worry that um, they might cling on to those values and those beliefs uh, where they still think that talking about your feelings or vulnerability is a weakness. So that's one obstacle that they still have to overcome. And good thing is, younger people my age, we can actually help them by talking about uh, mental health issues, mental health wellness with them. So that's one thing that we can offer to the to the uh, to our parents' generation. Jacob, before I throw it to anybody else, I got to tell you, every time you say people my age, I kind of seize up inside. So, <laughs> thank you for reminding me always. Uh, Sorry about that, Mike. Let me, let, me, let me throw that, that opening question to also Patrick and Esther. Uh, Esther, what's your take on that? Can we learn something from the younger folks on, on, um, on dealing with mental health? Yeah, I think like Jacob said, mental health has come a long way. Um, I think younger generation is definitely an advantage given that they have way more um, access, right, to the internet. And so they're able to go search for the things they're experiencing and are by, like, it's very rare that you won't find an instance or somebody that you can relate to, right? Um, and I think just other generations, even people my age and older can learn from this by seeing how open they are to it. And then I think also seeing that it's helpful I think that will be what helps the previous generations be able to embrace this more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to get back to this a little bit later, so I'm going to move on. We're going to talk about specifically those generational differences in a second. But as we define stigma, I want to get at this, public versus self-stigma. Um, as you know, public stigma involves the negative attitudes that others have about mental illness. Self-stigma refers to those negative attitudes that we have internalized, the things that we've heard and we've we've internalized, we believe them about our own state, about our own conditions. I'm wondering for your perspective, um, Patrick, let's start with you, we haven't heard from you yet today. What does society in this country say to us about mental illness? You having, having come to this country, you might have an interesting perspective about that. Here in this country, what, is, what do we tell ourselves and tell others about mental illness? And does that message or those messages differ across generations? Yeah, thank you for the question, Michael. I also just want to note that, you know, before we go any further, we need to define what public versus self-stigma is, which you did. Um, I think there are two separate entities. However, they are definitely connected in many ways. Um, the public stigma is what causing um, 
great amount of stress on individual living with mental illness or mental health conditions, um, myself included, because I'm living with depressions. Um, and then as far as self-stigma is something that, you know, the person living with in, uh, mental illness has internalized over the years. Um, I truly believe that, you know, once you um, been told many times over and over by many different people that there is something wrong with you, sadly, a lot of people start to believe it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's the part, that's the process of internalizations, um, the, the public stigma into the self stigma. Mm -hmm. As far as um, being from a, a foreign country and, and migrated here as an immigrant, um, definitely there is a, a culture shift. However, um, the stigma is pretty much the same across um, countries. You know, um, in Vietnam, um, having a mental illness, just like Jacob mentioned, is a weakness that is frowned upon, especially if you are a man. And in my case, I am, you know, basically the, 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 the oldest or, you know, the elder um, man of the family. So having that quote unquote weakness is certainly frowned upon and, constantly obstetry because um, we supposed to be strong, we're supposed to take care of the family. So, you know, in addition to the public stigma, the self stigma is one of the many reasons why people do not get the help they need. Um, statistically speaking, one in four of adults in the US already have a mental illness or will develop a mental illness at some point in their life. Mm. Um, and having this um, stigma and discrimination against mental illness doesn't lead, suddenly doesn't help. 